John, when did you join the Signal Bay Fire Company? Mm, 1963, probationary. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. And how joined, long? Joined on a dare. <laughs> <laughs> how long were you on the uh, probation? One year. That's great. That's great. Well, why did you join Singerly? I saw a fireman fall to the back of 26, I think at the time, trying to drag a line to a bar. And I happened to work with Gary and Larry Stork. Got a laughing about it, and they challenged me to join and do better. I joined, <laughs> and I've enjoyed it ever since. <laughs> Well, the next question was, is, were you an officer or a committee chairperson? At any time. At any time, throughout your entire time. Yeah, I held just about every line officer was. Mm -hmm. I was uh, vice president. I was chief. <laughs> uh, I was bingo chairman at one time. I don't remember what year that was. Mm -hmm. Carnival chairman. Wow, that was a big fundraiser. Uh, I took every every year. I took that week off for vacation to spend at the carnival, and uh, they made me chairman one year. That's and, good. Do you know what year? Do you remember what year you were chief? Ah, uh, I had several terms: seventy-seven to eighty, I think, and then again eighty-two to eighty-five. And I've got a record at somewhere. Well, throughout all your years, which has been a heck of a long time, from 63 to now, but through the years you were really active and everything, what do you recall as your most memorable moment? There may be a couple, but what was your first memorable moment? Probably the first bar I went to. It was a fatal bar. Was it? Without any training. Back then they gave you your gear to get on. And it was in, uh, uh, what the heck is that development up there? Glen Farms. And the elderly lady lost her life. Oh. I had to chop a hole in the pond, it was wintertime, so they could draft water. And that was the only thing I actually got to do, but it stuck in my mind. And the person lost their life on the first bar I went to. Yeah, that stuck for a long while. That's a hard one to... Yeah. Wow. Mm. I've seen a lot of death over the years, but that, for some reason it sticks in my mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, what else do you recall as a memorable moment? Uh, believe it or not, finding a body at the fireworks factory on 7. Really? There was an explosion at, uh, I think it was Bellows at the time, and there was a young lady they couldn't find. We were mopping up the building, and I happened to stumble over her. And that kind of stuck in my mind, that plus... Did you recall? Well, it was a plane wreck. Okay. I spent uh, two days out there. First time I ever got paid for being out. I really? worked the general cable. And because of missed work, they paid because of the plane crash. Uh, the train wreck. I worked for the 12 hour general cable. Got off at 12 o'clock at night. I went out and pumped the engine until 7 in the morning. I wasn't even an operator at the time. They just showed me how to... Control it, and we had to keep water flowing on the tanks. I did that for a week. That kind of stuff sticks in your mind, you know. What you did and seen. We were really lucky with that, believe me. The train wreck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by we were really lucky? Well, it, could have, it could have been a lot worse for the town. The whole it could town? Have took, yeah, it could have took the whole end of the town off if those cars had exploded. You know, all one time or whatever, instead of one at a time. They were, they were going off one at a time, instead of all at once. Do you think that the fire company, the volunteers that were there, were instrumental at preventing it being a Oh, large... absolutely, yeah. Like they called uh, Newcastle County National Air Guard truck down, uh -huh. and as they crossed the bridge, one of the cars blew up. They never even stopped. They went right back to Delaware. They came right on going. <laughs> so we had to kind of do everything ourselves. Lay the lines and keep the water on it and so forth. That was funny to see them do that. Just boom. 
Yeah. They weren't going to with it. And so we're not going to die on that one. Mm -mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I guess a lot of the stuff that you think about where you're up here and little things and spits and spats and disagreements is mm. nothing. It's minute compared to what... Oh, no. Everyday occurrences back then, it seemed like. How about auto accidents and other things outside of a building fire? I have one sticks in my mind right there, 21340. Tractor trailer had hit another one in the back. Bam. And the guy was conscious. And the time we didn't have a tool to get him out there. And they got the first tractor moved out of the way and got a chain on the cab trying to separate it so we get to him. Right. And unfortunately that man died before we could get him out of there. And that kind of stuck in my mind. There again, you're talking to somebody. Like Promise him you're going to do something for him and we just couldn't do it. Yeah. It expired right there. Um, there was only a handful of us that went to Baltimore City Hospital back then and learned how to do CPR. And when we went in the emergency room doing it, they didn't know what the heck we were doing. I didn't try to stop us. Back to Claude Cornett and, and I went and taught Union Hospital ER nurses how to do CPR. How big was that? Seriously, oh, Dr. Trebacus was in on that. Wasn't he a wonderful doctor? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah he was all for advancement, but uh, that was kind of heartbreaking when you went in there and they didn't know what you were doing, you know. That's amazing. We weren't young ones, water leaking. Jack Beard, there was about five of us when I got here. Went all the way to Baltimore City. Yeah, three days. Yeah. Had doctors, teachers. It was good. But that was yeah. before EMTs and all that stuff. Right. Well, what do you think was the biggest change during your years here at Singapore? Well, I know you saw a lot of changes and transition, mm -hmm. um, but what was the biggest change that you saw? The first most impressionable one. It'd be hard to say, to be honest with you, because like I said, there's so many changes and a lot of them are happening quickly. Um, well, what are some of the changes that you felt were important? Well, we went to box alarms. I have the original box alarm things here. Uh, that was a big step. We went to a third station. and uh, The third station being station 14. 14, right. Uh, all those things just... At the time, we were looking to take care of the public the best we could and the quickest we could. And some of those things came about quickly and others didn't. And I never thought over Station 3 would go away, but now that I look back and see why it did, everything's moving out of town to start with. So. Right. Uh, just, uh, I don't know, there was a lot of things. Uh, training was a big thing. It seemed like every year they come out with some different training, and that's a big thing. Well, I know you've brought a lot of information. Do you want to show me some of the things that you... Well, I think some of this you have. This is a train wreck. This is out Cecil Wig. I don't think you have that out there. Oh, wow. These are also from Cecil Wig. Oh, my word. This was a house for Friendship fights. This was uh, Charles Bowen, Charles Cornett, me, Jack Beard being presented because we had delivered a baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a train wreck. Oh my word, look at that black smoke. All yeah. the way up from the train wreck down here. Mm -hmm. Whew. That's where they went. Flames? Oh lord. You guys almost look like ants at the bottom <laughs> yeah, of the picture. Exactly. We were down over a hill there one time, Tom McIntyre, and he said one of the cars was going to blow. We were like rats trying to get up over it. <laughs> he was just fooling with us. <laughs> but we were crawling in dirt trying to go Hampton Scott and Border Leader, about four of us took that. Really? Yeah. Well, well that must. This here, oops, more pictures. Mm -hmm. This was the original. Paperwork for our original box alarms. When I was chief, I was the first chief to use box alarm, and this is when we sat down and went through all the boxes and so forth. 
more welcome to any of this stuff you like. So you devised the whole box alarm? Me and my officers, yeah. It's been changed several times over the years. I right, know, but, but this was this the very was first. It. Absolutely. Do you remember what year that was, John? First year I was chief, 77. 77. Isn't that fascinating? Very first box alarms, the entire draft. Look at that. That was a house bar in Elk Mills. I, I got overcome there because at that time they had canister masks. And I went in. They wouldn't fill the rest of carbon monoxide. <laughs> Come out and pass that boom. <laughs> Gotcha. Wasn't bad, but we got rid of those masks. <laughs> you said that's the end of that one. This was important. Oh. I don't know how anybody else in the company was ever given an award like that or not. Look at this. State Maryland State Firemen's Association. This is for John Turnbull in grateful recognition of his name having been presented as a nominee for Fireman of the Year. In 1980. Isn't that wonderful? That is something to be proud of. From the Maryland State, John, that's awesome.